Hey guys, Ali here. And in this and couple of following videos, I will give you a very high level introduction to how machines communicate over the internet. We briefly discussed earlier that internet works with your computer and connected devices following a set of rules of communication called protocols. When talking about internet, internet works with help of internet protocol suite, commonly known as TCP IP. TCP IP is a framework for organizing a set of communication protocols which are rules as to how different actors taking part in internet-based communications should initiate and respond to communication requests. Too technical? Absolutely. So let's understand with help of an example. Now regularly one would explain the TCP IP layers first and then give an example. But I would like to try the opposite, that is give you an example first and then explain TCP IP. So let's see how it works out. So imagine a scenario where you lead sales department of a company that makes beautiful cards like wedding, birthday type of cards and some wholesale client on the other side of the globe who has expressed interest and asking for samples, delivery modes, etc. You are sending him some of your samples as well as set of steps or process or protocol you usually follow in case he's interested. So you compose a beautiful letter detailing the steps like he would send you a formal request. You would send samples for related products. He would respond with list of item IDs for products he's interested in with quantities in the form you're sending over. Then you would deliver the product in X days, which would be inspected for quality, then payment made and whatnot. In short, the entire sequence of steps that would make up a complete transaction. You hand over the letter, forms and samples to your staff and attend the next matter on your plate. Your staff realizes the amount of stuff you're trying to send is too big to fit on the standard size envelope of the post office. So it breaks the paperwork down into multiple envelopes of standard size envelopes and adds a sequence number and a sum of number of characters in the letter in each envelope in case clients wants to ensure no paper is missing or tampered with during travel. This is called checksum in technical terms. Do remember this is a twisted example to help you understand TCP IP and might not make 100% sense. All right, let's go on. Then it hands over all of these envelopes to the postal department and goes for a coffee break. The postal department is an extension of postal service in your huge organization. It looks up the address and postcode of client and also determines the best or cheapest way to get the letters delivered to him. The letters and forms are lightweight and can go via courier while samples are heavy and can be sent via regular mail or sea freight which might arrive late but would cost less or otherwise if instruction is to efficiently deliver. Postal service trucks takes the letters to their dispatch hub which sends the letters to the destination and the routes take form of aeroplanes, trains, trucks, sea, etc. until they start arriving at client office to his postal department. The client postal department identifies which communication department team is handling such cases and delivers them to the concern team. The comms team on the receiver end realizes that the first letter received is not the first one in the sequence. So they send a received acknowledgement for the received packet and wait for the others. The packets keep arriving and are acknowledged, but there is an issue with two packets. One is wet and the samples are unreadable and hence the number of character checks can't be performed. In other words, the package is damaged. And the other packet simply never got delivered. The department sends a NAC or negative acknowledgement for the damaged packet to you, the sender, which means you need to resend the damaged package. For the lost package, the client needs to do nothing. In this case, it's your the sender's communication department's job to ensure it receives acknowledgement for all packets from the client. As client doesn't know, you sent the samples via C freight and they would take two weeks to deliver. You know when they were meant to be delivered and by when you should have received an acknowledgement. If the acknowledgement never arrives in anticipated time, you resend the packet, which is indeed the case for the packet client never received. Finally, in the client comms department, the missing packet as well as the replacement for damaged package arrive. And department notices another packet, the one that didn't arrive in time, is also there. So now there are two packets with the same sequence number. Turns out a ship was stuck in the mud causing all sea-based freight to be delayed. But by that time, the sender had sent another copy. No worries, since they are duplicates, the client can throw one of the packets in trash. Now the client's comm department has all the packets available, error and checksum checked, it sends acknowledgement for received packets, 
sorts them neatly in sequence, and delivers them to the big man upstairs. The business manager reads the letter and is now aware of the sequence of steps to initiate and follow through with the transaction. He drafts appropriate instructions for his staff, assigning them responsibilities as per the procedure you send to him, and then sends you a formal request by filling out the item number and quantities form. That is the step one in your process. You respond and both parties follow through with the negotiated process to complete the transaction all the way. So what did we accomplish here? Two things. First, we were able to agree upon a set of rules or protocol to complete an end-to-end -end transaction with client, requesting your services on proscribed form all the way to payment acknowledgement. And secondly, your organization was able to do a reliable communication with the client office, handling all the constraints of postal services like packet size limit, to optimizing delivery via cost and time, and ensuring all packets are not only received by client, but also received intact by way of acknowledgements and resending undelivered or damaged packages. What more can a boss expect? So let's bring TCP IP into the picture and start by reading the definition again and how it should make more sense. TCP IP is a framework for organizing a set of communication protocols, which are rules as to how different actors taking part in internet-based communications should initiate and respond to communication requests. So let's identify and label actors or more formally layers of TCP IP from our example here. The first actor is the sales lead who is trying to send the business process information and samples to the client. We can call that actor as the business or more technically in TCP IP terms, application layer. That layer or actor is responsible for talking business or application level stuff with the business or application layer on the other side, which would be the manager on top floor of the client office. These two only want to talk the business, rules, protocols, and payments. That is the interesting stuff that matters for the task at hand and don't want to be bothered with letter delivery, error handling, and all. Now, technically, application layer provides several protocols over which user applications are developed. These protocols do the heavy lifting of reliable data transfer using underlying layers and user can focus on business aspects. The most important protocol among others is HTTP or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which is the backbone of internet and serves as transfer protocol between web clients like browsers and web servers. Others include FTP for file transfer, SMTP for emails, HTTPS for encrypted communication, Telnet that allows users to log in to other computers on networks, etc. Final word on HTTP is that it allows you to write web applications using a standard syntax, and you can simply request a web page or portion of it without getting bothered about how your request is going to reach the server and how the server would reliably send the response. The purpose of including example of negotiating the steps for transaction was to highlight that we, as web developers, develop web-based applications using application layer protocols. Protocols like HTTP allow us to focus on the business or application-centric aspect of our application rather than being bogged down by details of data transfer. So even though in our example, our business manager was first setting up a protocol and later following it, in TCP IP, the protocol is either set up already, like HTTP, or you can come up with your own custom application layer protocol and then build on top of it. And before you ask, yes, it is possible, but you need to do some very low level C++ programming or something. Building using application layer protocol or creating custom application layer protocol, you can focus on higher level business tasks and not be bothered about error handling, missing packets, etc. That unenviable task goes to the comms department on both sides in our example, and the technical name of this actor or layer in TCP IP is transport layer. Transport layer is responsible for end-to-end -end communication, breaking and assembling the packets into and from manageable chunks, ensuring their reliable delivery, which not only includes making sure all packets are delivered to and acknowledged by the other party, as well as ensuring the packets are delivered intact and receiver is able to guarantee error-free delivery via checksum mechanism. Finally, it also ensures the packets are delivered to application layer in the exact same sequence they were sent. 
The transport layer does not care how and when the packets it created are shipped. This is a job of the postal department in your office. And this introduces the third actor, the network layer. Network layer is responsible for not only determining the client address, but also the route selection for packet delivery. Since now we are introducing machine-to-machine -machine communication, the address is, is what is called IP address, short for Internet Protocol Address. IP address is a unique string of characters that identifies each computer using the Internet Protocol to communicate over the network. The IP-based identification can be for a local network or over the Internet, which in case you didn't notice literally means between networks. IP address is usually a string of numbers separated by dots or periods like 192.168.0.1, where each number can range from 0 to 255. The network layer is responsible for determining IP address of client. Now note that since internet is a network of networks, each network has a router with a public IP address. And within that network are devices that have a private IP address that can be duplicate with respect to some other network. The public IP address of routers are unique and traffic hops from router to router to reach the destination router. This means there are multiple routes to the destination to choose from. The network layer has several protocols at its disposal to choose the best optimal route to the destination. I won't go into detail here, but just giving you an idea that numbers of routers can be a criteria where smallest number route is chosen, but a slow or busy router in between can result in this criteria not being the optimal one. The network layer might choose another route using some other criteria in that case. I think you get the gist of it. The network layer makes our chosen example a bit convoluted in the sense that in machine-to-machine -machine communication, it is responsible for delivering of packet right until the router of destination. And that is precisely why I said the postal department is an extension of postal service in our building in the layers terminology. It takes on the task of both addressing as well as delivery of package to your postal department, which is, again repeating, part of postal or network layer. It delivers the packet to the device from where your computer is accessible via direct wire or Wi-Fi signal. This just leaves us with the link or data link layer. The difference between network and data link layer is extremely subtle. That is why the postal department had to be located inside the client office to, since it's physically connected with comms department in the client office. In machine case, your router at home is the node where data link is between the router and your computer connected via Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Rephrasing, the last layer or data link layer are protocols to deal with physically connected nodes or machines which communicate not using the IP address but using your machine's network card, MAC address, using a wireless signal or network cable. It's like postal service delivering letter to reception of an office and then it is delivered to your desk by an internal mechanism like cubicle number against your name. This concludes a very, very high-level basic overview of TCP IP. The protocol powering the internet has a lot of depth to it, but for now, I just wanted you to be aware of and appreciate what goes on under the hood when you or your browser makes a web request. From perspective of web or full-stack development, this is essential knowledge one must be aware of. Otherwise, each of these layers can have dedicated courses about them, so we are going to stop right here and would come to individual aspects later, maybe. Please give a thumbs up if you liked and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Goodbye.